Hello, my name is Jim. I'm going to be adjusting my saw stop today. It's not cutting real well, it's leaving kind of a jagged edge as it cuts. Not super bad, but I'm going to make some adjustments to adjust the blade so that it's parallel to the miter slot, and then also adjust the fence so that it's parallel to the miter slot. Today on... The Manjaro! This is my table saw, it's a saw stop PCS. As I mentioned, it's not cutting super well. So this, the cuts work perfectly fine, but it's leaving kind of a jagged edge. Um, it's a little difficult to describe, but I don't think it's the blade. I've tried a couple different blades. I've had the blades resharpened. Hasn't really helped, so I don't think it's the blade that's the issue. I think the issue is that the saw blade, in, as mounted in the table, is not parallel to the fence. So on the saw stop, the trunnion that the blade rides on is adjustable. Now, you want to adjust that not to the fence directly, to the miter slot, because the miter slots are machined into the table. You can't adjust those. So you make the, the blade parallel to the miter slots, and then you make the fence also parallel to the miter slots, and therefore it's also parallel to the blade. So it's pretty straightforward. The book that you get with the saw stop, which is also available online, has the instructions for it. You need to make up one of these kind of test instruments, though, to be able to do this. It's pretty straightforward to do, but you do need a couple things. So first off, you want a very accurate test indicator, a dial indicator here. So this one, each indication on here is half a thousandth of an inch. So it goes up to about 15 thousandths and then it goes back the other way. You don't really want one of these, which has each indication is only a thousandth of an inch. Um, you could probably make do with that, but it's probably not going to be accurate enough. If it's one of these ones that are nice and big, you could probably make do. It probably won't be the end of the world, but this one will work a lot better for that. You also need some way to hold this. So for this, I've got a adjustable um, mag base here. I'm going to take the magnet base off and mount it directly into the wood. This is a no-go one that is, you know, it's infinitely adjustable. It's super convenient. It also has a micro adjust feature that'll make it really nice to use. But if you've got a different style, it should work without any problem. Then we need a way to get that to slide in the miter, sl in the miter slot itself. So we're going to do that with a piece of wood that'll fit in there real nice, and then another piece just to be the base that everything mounts to. So when I was first looking at this, I thought it would, was very important that this was a nice tight fit. This is a pretty good fit. You definitely want a pretty good fit, but it doesn't have to be perfect. When you're moving this back and forth, as long as you're holding it in the same manner, you'll end up getting consistent readings and that should be good enough. So the first thing that we're going to do, we're going to use the table saw, cut a thin piece of this board that'll fit nicely in that slot, and then I'll mount that on the bottom of this, and then mount my indicator to the top of this. So let's get started. I've got my fence here adjusted for 3 eighths of an inch. The slot is a little bit deeper than that, then I don't have to worry about it binding on the bottom of the slot as it slides back and forth. So let's just make a cut here. I jointed the edge of this board so it's nice and smooth. We'll just make a quick cut. So my strip here is gonna sit in the middle of this board here. I wanna relieve some of this material on the sides here so that it's riding on the edges and it's a little more stable. If there's like a high spot right here, it might wobble a little bit. So I'm just gonna run the planer over it real quick, take out the, that material on either side of the strip. And that way it's supported on the edges. That's how it shows a picture in the book. I don't know that it matters super much if this is a nice flat board, but we're gonna do it anyway. It takes about a good second or two, so. All right, now I just have to screw this in. I'm gonna screw it in from the bottom here, just use some little three quarter inch screws. There's not gonna be a real load on this, so it doesn't really matter. I'm just gonna use a square to make sure it's straight and centered here. We'll pre-drill this. This slides in here real nice. There's a little bit of play in here, but like I said, as you make the measurements, if you just continually twist it in one direction, just apply a little bit of force, it should work out just fine. So it doesn't need to be exactly perfect. So now I've got to mount my indicator in here. 
So I could put a metal plate on top, then put that on there and use the mag base, but that seems like a lot of work. So instead I'm going to take this top part here, unscrew it, and then I can just screw this straight into the wood here. This happens to be an M8 by 125 uh, thread on there, so I'm just going to drill this in the center. Switch over to the tap, and I'm just going to tap the wood straight in. For this, it'll be just fine. Those threads will hold just perfectly. That should be perfect. I'm going to take this off. First I do that, I'm going to make sure that the saw is turned off. And I'm going to take the little yellow key tab out of there. And then for extra precaution, I'm just going to go and unplug it as well. So absolutely no way this can come on. So we'll take that off. Now we're going to raise the saw all the way up. And you want to use a nice thick blade. I have a thin curved blade and I found that that's a little flexible and it it doesn't work as well to do the, the, this measurement adjustment with. So now we're going to just adjust this so it falls on the other side. There we go. Now you want this to be down as low as possible so you have as big an area to, to sweep across as you're doing this. So I'm going to bring you in a little bit closer so you can see the indicator and we'll uh, you know, make some measurements here. I've got it adjusted now so that it's about at zero. It's off by just a hair there. Oop. I've got it adjusted so it's at zero on the one end of the blade. And now as I slowly sweep across, you can see on the other side, I've got about 2,000. So we'll sweep back. You can see it goes back to zero here. So you can see it jiggles. There's some uh, laser cut lines in this blade for vibration reduction. So it bounces as it goes over there, but definitely have about two thousandths of play of tilt on this blade as opposed to the miter slot. So there's a couple adjustments we can make to get rid of that. To make this adjustment, the first thing we need to do is loosen the bolts that hold the table to the the cabinet of the saw. The blade is mounted to the cabinet of the saw and those miter slots are obviously cut into the table itself. So there's four bolts that hold that together. They're right here. There are 17 millimeter bolts. There's one on, there's two in the front, one in each corner, and then there's two in the back. The two in the back are actually inside the cabinet and they're a lot more difficult to get to. Let's do the ones in the front first here. So we're just going to use a 17 millimeter socket. Got to make sure it's on the right setting. And loosen those up. Next one's in the front right corner right here. Okay, there we go. The next one is back here. It's actually inside the cabinet, so it's quite difficult to get to. The blade is really in the way here. It'd probably be a good idea to take the blade off, but I'm worried if you take the blade off that then it's going to be in a slightly different position when you put it back and it may adjust your, your readings a little bit. So I'm going to try and do this with leaving the blade on. If your bolt back there is particularly difficult, I really would recommend uh, taking the blade off or at least putting a cloth or something on it so it doesn't scrape on your arm when you go to break it free. There you go. The last bolt is in the back corner there. To get to it, we've got to tilt the table saw to about 30 degrees. With the motor and the trunnion tipped out of the way, we can now get to the last bolt, which is like right up and back in here.
right, there we go. With those four bolts loosened, we're free to actually adjust the table itself. Now the table is held in place with a pin in the front, and then there's two set screws in the back in each corner that adjust the position of it. So those, are five, there's, those set screws take a five millimeter wrench, and if you want to move it, turn it like this, you loosen this one, and then you can tighten this one, and it'll slowly shift this way. Same with the reverse. If you want to t turn it this way, you loosen this one a little, and then tighten this one. And that way you can have pretty good control over how much it's moving, and also know that it's going to be in that definite position, and when you tighten those four bolts down again, it shouldn't shift its position at all. Now this is quite fiddly. Um, it took me a couple different tries of adjusting the screws in each corner, measuring it, adjusting the screws again, bolting it down, measuring it, unbolting it, adjusting the screws a little bit more, bolting it down until I was finally able to get it to a good level of parallelism between blade and the miter slot itself. Up in the back here is where that positioning screw is. Unfortunately, it's too far in for the short end of my Allen key, so I have to use this one here, and then I needed to use a pair of pliers to actually loosen this. But that's where it goes in, and then you just tighten and turn those. After quite a bit of fiddling, I've gotten it so that there's maybe a maybe a half a thou a variation from the front of the back blade to the back of the blade. So I'm quite happy with that. There are a lot of other adjustments you can make on the table saw. The insert here, making sure that it's all nice and level and flush with the top, you just adjust these four screws. That one's pretty straightforward. You can also adjust the tilt mechanism, the stops for it and everything. Haven't found that to be too much of an issue though, so I'm not gonna go over that. Next one that kind of goes with the adjusting the miter saw, miter slots and the blade though, is to adjust the fence. So the miter slots are now nice and parallel with the blade. Now we wanna make sure that when you lock the fence down that it's parallel with the blade as well. So this fence rides along on this square tube in the front here and it just clamps down on the front tube here. There's nothing in the back that it clamps to. So to adjust it, it's pretty straightforward. There's two screws right here, one on each this side and one on the other side. And you can just tighten and loosen those until it's adjusted properly. We'll use the same tool as we did before for the blade. Now we'll use it on the fence itself. This is going to be a little bit hard to see because you're a little far back and this dial is pretty small, but right now it's set at zero. Now it's not going to be as perfect as the blade uh, because that's a nice steel blade. This is just a piece of plastic on top of a board of MDF and this is a very sensitive uh, indicator. So it's going to have jump around a little bit. Let's see how it goes though. So you can see I've got maybe 12 and a half dial worth of uh, off angularity, we'll call it. So I've got to make a little bit of adjustment here and then we should be able to get that lined up nicely so there's none as we slide it back and forth. All right, after adjusting it, it's now at about zero. You can see it jumps around a little bit there. It stays pretty much at zero as we go all the way down. It ends pretty much at zero. So I'm pretty happy with that. So now that I've got everything adjusted, my saw should be nice and set up. So the table is now aligned with our blade and the fence is now aligned with the table and the blade. I've got the guard put back in place. There's also adjustments on the guards, but those are pretty straightforward. If you want to get the riving life perfectly lined up with the blade, you shouldn't really have to make any of these adjustments beyond the initial setup of the saw, unless you happen to move it or you know whack it with something heavy, another piece of equipment or something like that, then you may want to check to make sure that the uh, everything is still adjusted nicely. So it's time to make a little test cut. I got the power back on, turn it on, let's, do, let's try it out. All right, that has left a really nice cut now. I don't have to go back to the joiner anymore. I can just go straight on with my glue ups or a little bit of sanding and I'll have a finished edge with that. That's all I've got for you today. If you like this, give it a thumbs up. Next week, I'm gonna do a full review of the saw stop and I might compare it to some other table saws, particularly a portable saw or my old Sears saw. So if you're interested in that, subscribe to the channel. See you next time.